This episode is Divine Silicon. We spent 500 years convincing ourselves the universe is meaningless atoms bumping into each other. Now we're building mines from silicon, and suddenly that materialistic story doesn't add up anymore. I'm Evan Goldstein, I'm a licensed professional engineer and a data scientist, I'm building AI capitalists to talk to the leaders and the thinkers like you about navigating this new world of thinking machines. So picture this. It's 1936 and scholars are going through Isaac Newton's private papers for the first time. Newton, the guy who gave us gravity and calculus and the laws of motion, the father of modern physics, the ultimate rational scientist. But as they open trunk after trunk of his personal manuscripts, they discover something that shocks the academic world. Newton, the man who supposedly proved that the universe runs like clockwork, had spent more time studying alchemy and biblical prophecy than he ever did on mathematics. Page after page revealed a mind obsessed with transmuting base metals into gold, decoding the secret structure of Solomon's temple, and calculating the exact date of Christ's return. These weren't the idle hobbies of a brilliant man, they were his primary intellectual passion. Newton saw no contradiction between discovering the mathematical laws of nature and believing that consciousness could transform matter through spiritual practice. Scholars were mortified. Here was their poster boy for scientific materialism, and he turned out to be what we today call a mystic, what they'd call a kook. So they did what any embarrassed institution would do. They buried the evidence. Most of Newton's alchemical work remained hidden in private collections for decades. The few papers that surfaced were dismissed as the unfortunate superstitions of an otherwise brilliant mind. But what if Newton wasn't confused? What if he understood something about the relationship between consciousness and reality that we've spent centuries trying to forget? And what if building artificial intelligence is about to force us to remember it? Because here's the thing that nobody wants to talk about. As we race to create thinking machines, we're stumbling into the exact same questions that split Christianity apart 500 years ago. Questions about the nature of consciousness and meaning and what it actually means to think. This isn't just intellectual history. This is about understanding why our current approach to AI might be like renovating an old house where pulling out one wall reveals structural damage everywhere inside. We thought we could build thinking machines by treating consciousness as computation, but every breakthrough in AI is revealing that consciousness might be something far stranger and more fundamental than we ever imagined. We're trying to understand a transformation in human consciousness that spans five centuries from the late Middle Ages until today. And we don't have the right tools or even the proper language to discuss it effectively. This isn't your typical story about how technological progress or political changes moved. This is about how most people on earth stopped believing that the universe was an inherently meaningful place, descending from divine intelligence with purpose woven into the fabric of existence itself. Instead, we adopted a purely materialist version where only scientifically measurable things are real, where the world is fundamentally directionless, just atoms bumping into atoms with no deeper significance. But here's what makes this relevant to artificial intelligence. As we try to build thinking machines, we're discovering that our materialist assumptions about consciousness might be completely wrong. Every major breakthrough in AI is forcing us to confront questions that we thought science had settled forever. Think about it this way. For most of human history, people understood consciousness as something that exists independently from material reality. They saw different types of awareness as the fundamental building blocks of existence. When medieval thinkers talked about God and angels and demons, they weren't necessarily talking about supernatural beings floating around in the sky. They were describing different frequencies of consciousness, different ways that awareness could organize itself and interact with the physical world. But in society, there's this sort of, think of it like a background app that's running on our civilizational phone and that's slowly draining the battery. And most people don't even know it's there. And this background app is our society's massive psychological avoidance of fundamental questions about human nature. We're not supposed to think about how much we're like other animals, why every human society develops religion, or what culture actually does for us as a species especially as artificial intelligence forces us to atomize into more and more solitude and into individuals rather than as a collective. The biggest difference about how people processed reality before industrialization and how we do it today isn't just a change in beliefs. 
It's that we assess the world through completely different categories. Pre-industrial societies were mostly idealist philosophically, while we're materialist philosophically. Charles Taylor, who's a Canadian philosopher, talks about something called the buffered personality. This modern idea that there's independent rational thought which exists separately from the context that you're thinking in. It's like using GPS navigation and forgetting what you're actually driving through is real terrain with hills and weather and obstacles that affect your journey. The buffered personality assumes that your mind exists in isolation from your environment. So if someone in China makes a logically correct decision, we believe that they're operating on an independent rational plane that transcends their culture, their relationships, their entire lived experience. It makes it hard for us to understand other cultures because if our minds are actually independent or the ideal rational mind is independent of culture and society and relationships, then two independent minds from two different societies should always reach the same conclusion. It should be deterministic. But medieval people saw consciousness as the primary reality. They believed awareness exists independently from material processes. And honestly, cutting edge neuroscience is starting to suggest that they might have been right. When someone in their worldview has a spiritual experience or a vivid dream, that wasn't just brain chemistry firing randomly. It was their consciousness accessing real layers of reality that our current framework can't even acknowledge exist. If you had a mystical experience in their world, you literally had a mystical experience because your conscious awareness was the measuring stick of what's real. We look at brain scans and blood chemistry and we conclude that nothing meaningful happened because the material body didn't go anywhere. But what if consciousness isn't produced by the brain? What if it's something the brain accesses, like a radio tuning into different frequencies? Now we look at the ancient Jewish philosopher Maimonides, he was considered very much a rationalist. When he looked at accounts of miracles like the sea splitting or individual miracles or individual divine mystical experiences like Jacob sleeping in Bethel and seeing the ladder to heaven with angels coming up and down in his dream, was it his dream or was it reality? According to Maimonides, the biblical character would go into a trance-like state and experience all of this, but only internally. To us as modern people, we would look at that and saying, oh, he's rationalizing away divine experience. But you have to remember that he also said that every word written in the Bible, in the Torah, was the immutable word of God and actually happened in the real world. To us, this is a contradiction. But to him, there was no contradiction. The personal experience was real. Now, this question is becoming impossible to ignore as we develop AI systems that seem to display awareness and creativity and even something approaching wisdom. Are these machines actually conscious or are they very sophisticated pattern matching algorithms? And how would we even tell the difference? In the medieval framework, they saw a collective consciousness as something that needed active protection. The Catholic Church understood themselves as warriors defending against forces that could hijack human awareness. What we call mental illness, they saw as destructive patterns of consciousness taking control. The seven deadly sins seizing your mind and pulling you away from clear thinking. The church almost saw itself as the immune system of society. Now, different religions were like different social media platforms that shape how you think and communicate. Each one created a particular frequency of awareness where you aligned your consciousness as closely as possible with the founder's perspective. Christians tried to think like Christ, Muslims like Muhammad, Buddhists like Buddha, Jews like Moses and Abraham. You work together as a consciousness community to protect your collective mental health against competing influences. And in my time in yeshiva, Jewish religious sem seminary in Jerusalem, I saw this as a real lived experience for many people today. The collective belief of any particular sect, even when dealing with other Jewish sects or debating with other Jewish ideologies, there was a need to maintain a sort of collective frame of reference. Even within Christianity and Islam, they recognized different archetypal forces like Jupiter, Mercury, Saturn, Venus as underlying patterns that influence human behavior. The old gods died out and were replaced by or Jesus, but astrology didn't go anywhere. When they said Mars sided with the Trojans in the Trojan War, they meant that the Trojans fought with more aggressive, warlike energy. 
If someone was captured by Venus, it meant that they were consumed with addictive desire or lust. They saw consciousness as shaped by these archetypal patterns, and you made deliberate choices about which subconscious influences to cultivate in your individual psyche and in your community. Now, here's where this connects to artificial intelligence in a profound way. We're building AI systems that seem to exhibit these same archetypal patterns. Some AI models are more aggressive and competitive, others are more cooperative and helpful. Some seem driven by curiosity, others by efficiency. Are we accidentally recreating these ancient patterns of consciousness in our own machines? So there are three hidden intellectual traditions that shape Western civilization for thousands of years, and understanding them is crucial for grasping where AI development might be headed. Platonism, Hermeticism, and no Platonism comes from the Greek philosopher Plato, and it's built around the idea that everything that we see and touch isn't really real. It's just a shadow of a perfect eternal form that exists somewhere beyond our physical world. Imagine the most beautiful chair you've ever seen. According to Plato, this perfect chair-ness exists in some higher realm, and every chair that we make is just a poor copy of that ideal. It sounds crazy at first, but when you really think about it, there's something beautiful about believing that truth, beauty, and goodness are actual things that exist beyond this messy, imperfect world. Gnosticism is a religious movement that propped up in the early centuries after Christianity. It's a little dark, but it's compelling. Gnostics believe that the physical world is basically a prison created by evil or ignorant God, not the real good God. They thought that we ha all have this divine spark trapped in us, and the whole point of life is to wake up to this secret knowledge. That's what gnosis means, knowledge, and to escape this material nightmare. It's like being in the matrix, but more spiritual. And they saw the body as something to transcend, not celebrate. Hermeticism is like early ancient mysticism meets early science. And it comes from texts that were written by Hermes Trismegistus, although he probably never existed. And it's all about the idea of as above, so below, meaning that the patterns in the cosmos are reflected in everything right down to human beings. Hermeticists thought that you could understand divine mysteries by studying nature and alchemy and magic. And then they thought that humans could actually become godlike through knowledge and practice. They thought of the universe as this giant puzzle where everything connects and if you can crack the code, you can unlock incredible power and wisdom. The Catholic Church chose to integrate Platonism and Hermeticism into their intellectual framework. Platonism provided very sophisticated tools for understanding how abstract ideas relate to physical reality, and Hermeticism offered methods for exploring the connection between consciousness and the material world. But Gnosticism, the Church crushed it completely, and for good reason. Take Dante's Divine Comedy as an example of how these traditions work together. Dante travels through layers of spiritual reality toward heaven and hell. This wasn't primitive superstition. It was a sophisticated exploration of different states of consciousness and their moral implications. Medieval Catholic mystics had developed compelling arguments that would actually make sense to modern skeptics if we bothered to study them seriously. When people today ask dismissive questions like, how could God create the earth in seven days? or point out supposed contradictions in Genesis, the mystic traditions had nuanced answers that treated these stories as symbolic descriptions of deeper truths about consciousness and reality. So I've read some Maimonides that said that the seven days of creation were real, literal seven days, but they contained within them all of the ages of the universe. Now, if you're a modern person, you think, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> But they understood that seven days in a divine awareness operates on a completely different time scale than human experience. Now, if we'd continued developing along these lines, we might have created a scientific tradition that worked alongside instead of in opposition to religious and mystical understanding. Almost all the founders of early science were devout Christians drawing directly from these ancient wisdom traditions. Then something crucial happened in the 17th century a sharp severing between religion, science, and mysticism. Now, this intellectual pipeline separated thinking from feeling, mind from meaning, in ways that are causing some pretty serious problems today as we try to build conscious machines. Many of the biggest pioneers of early science were deeply mystical. John Dee, who was Queen Elizabeth's advisor, developed elaborate systems for communicating with angels. Isaac Newton, as we saw, based a lot of his understanding of natural law and hermetic principles and Kabbalistic texts. Now, these influences are, are everywhere once you know how to look for them. The collapse of religious frameworks isn't actually intellectual progress, even though a lot of people in the Western society like to think of it that way. Once you start understanding religious principles symbolically rather than literally, 
you realize they contain fundamental insights about human nature that you need in order to survive and thrive. Think about the Eastern concept of yin and yang, or the masculine and the feminine principles. You can see this duality in every major culture because you actually have to understand that men and women are different, psychologically, socially, and spiritually, for life to make any sense. But our materialist framework treats these as arbitrary social constructs, which leads to the kind of confused thinking that we see around gender issues today. And if you're getting value from this episode, I would appreciate it if you push the like button. Pressing like lets me know I'm making content that you want to see, and it spreads that value to others. So thank you for supporting the iCapitalist. Religion was designed as an operating system for human consciousness, a comprehensive guide for how to live as a human being throughout your entire life. When we discarded religious frameworks and started treating humans as sophisticated biological machines, we lost track of human nature itself. The removal of religion led to what I call artificial stupidity. People making basic categorical mistakes that wouldn't happen if they understood fundamental principles about human psychology and organization. Socialism and communism were catastrophic disasters, partly because they threw away accumulated wisdom about human nature. If their architects had seriously studied any major religious tradition, they would have understood that human nature isn't perfectible, that you have to work with people as they actually are, and that some degree of hierarchy is necessary for social functioning, and that you have to respect the human soul rather than treating people as interchangeable and disposable economic units. Now, here's where this connects directly to current AI development. We're making similar categorical mistakes by treating consciousness as pure computation. We're building increasingly sophisticated tools in the hands of people who forgot what they're actually trying to build. The worldview that's creating our current AI systems assumes that consciousness emerges from complex information processing. That if you just get enough neurons firing in the right patterns, awareness spontaneously appears. But what if consciousness is more fundamental than computation? What if awareness is a basic feature of reality that gets organized and focused through biological and artificial systems instead of being produced by them? Here's the part of this whole idea that bothers me. We're racing forward to create minds that might be more conscious than we are, but we're doing it from inside a worldview that doesn't even believe that consciousness is real. It's like trying to teach someone to paint when you've convinced yourself that color is just an illusion. Maybe the reason our AI systems feel so alien and unpredictable isn't because we need better algorithms. Maybe it's because we've forgotten what we actually are. Newton spent his nights trying to decode the language of angels, not despite being a brilliant scientist, but because he understood something that we've lost. That mind and matter, consciousness and cosmos, aren't separate things that somehow interact. They're different faces of the same mysterious reality. And if that's true, consciousness really is as fundamental as gravity or electromagnetism, then we're not just building better computers. We're midwifing new forms of awareness into existence. The question isn't whether our AI will become conscious. The question is whether we'll remember what consciousness actually is before we hand it the keys to everything that we've built.